for the throne of grace and prayer on this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for life, health, and strength, the activities of our limbs, blood running warm in our veins, being able to get up and uh, breathe the air and uh, be able to see another day that you've made. For that, we're grateful, we're thankful. We don't wanna take anything for granted because we know that you are a good God. So we just ask you today, we ask you, come into our presence, Lord. Be with us, sup with us, fellowship with us, all day long in the mighty name of Jesus. Allow someone to receive the word from the man of God. Let it prick their hearts and change their lives and transform. 
of their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. These things we ask in your son's name. Amen. All right. Um, we're going to do our faith declarations. And when we go through this, I really want you to think about what it's saying. We've been through so much uh, this past year, this past two years. It's really been incredible what God has brought us through. So uh, with that in mind, as I said, you should see it on the screen. Repeat after me. Regardless of my starting point, present circumstances, or future obstacles, because God said it, I believed it, and that settled it. I'm pushing through in 2022. Amen. Let's give God some praise. Yes, I'm pushing through. I know you are also. Uh, we cannot give up. This is time in our service where it's time to pass the peace. Let's share Christ today by greeting someone either through text or in the comment section. So if you don't mind, take out your devices, your cell phones, and let somebody know that you're thinking about them and that you're praying for them. All right, Refuge, let's do it. Let's pass the peace. Welcome to the house of worship. Welcome to the house of praise. Welcome to the house of healing. Welcome to the
God, we come to you uh, at this moment on this day, uh, recognizing that as we move toward Easter Sunday and Resurrection Sunday and what that means, uh, we ask, oh God, that we wouldn't just be so caught up in everything that's happening that we miss the importance of what you have done and what you have said through your son, Jesus, who is the Messiah. And so, God, I ask in these next few moments for your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us into all truth as we look back at what Jesus said and what Jesus did and what that means for us today. So, Lord, I pray that you'll give us ears to hear and a spirit to receive and understand all that you're speaking to us. And we'll make sure we obey you and follow you fully. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, this is uh, our tradition is that uh, on first Sunday, we always stop and we always take time to observe and to celebrate and to commemorate uh, what is known as the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion, wh- whichever uh, word or way that you want to say it or, or, or however, you, you know, you process that. Uh, but in this, uh, Jesus did something at a Passover meal with his disciples that was so game changing was was so paradigm shifting that sometimes we miss it we can get so caught up in in observing and celebrating communion that we miss what it is that actually happened what jesus actually did and if we understand it in that context then i promise you uh your easter sunday matter of fact your every day will mean more and will it'll be a little deeper than than just going through the motions and so i want us to look today at uh, what jesus did and kind of recreating that scene uh, because there's some stuff that's said in little minor ways that if you're if you're not careful you'll skip right over it when you're reading through it Um, but in those little small words and in those small actions huge universal things took place that Jesus announced. So check this out. I want you to meet me in Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Mark was uh, a young teenager at the time. Uh, matter of fact, the, the the Last Supper and communion probably happened in his parents' house. Uh, he was a young African Jew, and his family lived there uh, along the 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 gate uh, near the gate. Uh, into the city of Jerusalem uh, and and was the scene 
for what was set up. So when Mark gives his account, he he's telling you what happened as a guy who was in the room and then filtering it through Peter, who was a little older and, and understood things a little bit more. Uh, let's look at how Mark frames what happens as the disciples and, and the, the family and, and those who could gather in that room were gathered together to celebrate Passover. Let's look at what happens. In Mark chapter 14, verse 22, uh, Mark says that as they were eating, Jesus took some bread, just a, 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 a unleavened matzo wafer. Um, it, it was... It had lines running through it as if it was striped and it was had holes in it, no yeast. So it was just kind of a flat little cracker looking thing. Um, it, and he's, he took some of the bread. There were three wafers that at the beginning of Passover meal were wrapped up. One in the middle was taken and was broken into. One part was wrapped in a cloth and then hidden by the leader. Jesus hid it somewhere in the house, the kids. Uh, maybe even Mark went to go find it. And it was that that middle piece of the three wafers of unleavened bread that Jesus took and he blessed it. That's, that's part of the whole Passover ritual. And then the Bible says that he began breaking it in pieces and giving pieces to each of the disciples. And he said, take it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine and gave thanks for it. He gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It's poured out as a sacrifice for many. I tell you the truth, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then Mark concludes that, that, that scene by saying, then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Watch this. Paul, who probably gives us the earliest um, rendition of what was probably used as a, a regular feature for the first century church celebrating this new communion, he, he, he he's, he's tells the story, um, but he adds a few other details. He says, for I pass on, this is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, verse 23 through 26. He says, for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave, gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, the, the, the third of four uh, glasses of wine that were a part of the, the, the Passover celebration. He took the third cup, which is the one they would take a part of, take part of after the meal. It was called the cup of blessing. He, he took the cup after supper and he said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. Now, when we talk about communion, when we talk about what it means, the, the word itself is this idea of coming into union. It's the idea of sharing or coming, being brought into intimate fellowship and relationship and having, having the rapport to be close enough to one another. We, we don't just call it communion because it's a nice big word. It's, it's a picture. It's the word picture of what Jesus did in this moment, that he takes the Jewish celebration of their redemption from slavery by God himself. That's what Passover was about. It was about remembering how uh, God brought them out of Egyptian slavery by the, the shedding of the blood of a lamb that would then marked the doors. The death angel passed over the, the people who had the blood on the doors. And it was after that final um, a curse of God by that death angel that killed off the firstborn of all the Egyptians and all those not covered by the blood, that they were released from their slavery. Passover celebrated, celebrates even today, um, that, that religious and cultural and even ethnic understanding of their no longer being slaves because of the hand of God. 
Jesus takes this religious, cultural, ethnic celebration of redemption and freedom and from that br brings it larger, brings it broader, and he incorporates and includes some aspects that, that are important. Now, uh, if you look at all the different accounts, Matthew has an account, Mark has an account, Luke has one, and then Paul has his in 1 Corinthians. When you look at them, they, they all mention how Jesus takes the unleavened bread and breaks it into pieces. The, the, the tense of that Greek verb for break into pieces is the idea of he kept breaking off pieces because the Jewish Passover tradition is that the, the leader of the family or the group that was gathered to celebrate Passover, that he would keep breaking the unleavened bread until everybody had a piece. Listen, Mark says that Jesus kept breaking it and giving it to his disciples until everybody who was celebrating, however many people there were, because it was more than just the 12, um, however many people were there, he kept breaking the bread until everybody had a piece. Now, it's, it's this unleavened bread. It doesn't have the stuff in it that can corrupt it. It's completely uncorrupted. It's striped. My stripes laid on Jesus. It's, it's has holes punched in it. It's pierced. Jesus said, this represents my body. This, this is what me, the one without sin, this is what they're going to do to me for you. He references that, that this bread is symbolic of his physical suffering that he's about to endure on the cross. And he states that his body is offered up and is given for them. And by them, he, he includes, by extension, all believers. And every disciple had a piece. Every disciple, every person had a piece of the unleavened bread that had been broken that represented the body of Jesus suffering for the sin of the world. See, when we celebrate communion, we have to realize that we're connected to Jesus by pain. It's, it's almost like a, a mother with, with her child. Because of what she has gone through physically, what she has gone through emotionally to bring this child into the world, there's this connection that's there between mother and child. My mom used to, every time I would mess up as a kid, my mom would remind me how many hours she was in labor with me. Uh, and now I'm, I'm still causing her suffering. And she wanted to remind me there's a connection between me and you. We are connected to Jesus through his suffering. Jesus died uh, what's theologically is known as a vicarious death, a, a substitutionary death. He took on himself what you and I should have. He said to the disciples, this is what they're going to do to me on your behalf. You're connected to me through the suffering that I will endure in order to bring you into new life. Uh, 1 Peter 3 and 18 says it like this, For Christ suffered once for sins, the just on the behalf of the unjust, that he might bring us to God. We, we're connected to Jesus through his suffering, but we're also connected to Jesus with his suffering. He's not the only one. We are now identified with Jesus. He says, this is my body. You have a piece of this. You own a piece of what it means to deal with the suffering. We are identified with him. Paul says it like this in Galatians 2 and 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ. Christ lives in me. Did you see that? That, that as, as I take on what Jesus has given me through his own physical death, I take him into me. He becomes a part of me. And now I identify myself because I am, I am willing to, through my identifying and taking him into me and me into him, now that, that all that he is and all that he represents, I represent. Uh, that, that, that there is a living of reality of the fact that because he gave me a piece of the suffering that I own, I can expect that 
life isn't going to be a crystal staircase. I, I have to anticipate that, that I'm going to participate in what it means to be different from the world system, to be different from other family members, from other people, because I have Jesus in me. I identify with him. And so that means there's going to be times when what they do and how they act and how they are is going to be totally opposite from the way that I am. And when they recognize it, they might come after me. That, that his physical suffering is something that I need to own, I need to take on, I need to identify with. It's not easy being a Jesus follower. But he says, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for you. I'm giving myself for you. And one of the writers says, do this in remembrance of me. But keep me in mind and know and recognize that, that you... This is how we develop who we are, me in you and you in me, by connecting through this aspect of suffering. Paul says it like this in Philippians 3 and 10. He says, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. But that also means I have to participate in his suffering and becoming like him in his death. That, that, that what it means when we when we take in communion, when we eat that bread, we're saying we are connected to Jesus by pain. That, that not only his pain and what it did for us, but the pain of what it means that I'm, I'm not going to be like the world. I'm not going to be like everybody else. I'm not going to be like the others in my sorority. I'm not going to be like the others on my job. I'm, I might even be different from the people in my own family because I have identified and connected with Jesus through this and I'm willing to deal with whatever it means, whatever the pains are, whatever the struggles are, I'm willing to identify with him because I have taken him into me because he has taken me into him. But now watch this. That wasn't the only part. It wasn't just that each disciple had a piece of the bread. The Bible says, uh, matter of fact, uh, in Matthew 26, he, he says, and Jesus took the cup of wine the, the, the third cup, the, the cup of blessing, and he gave thanks to God for it. That, that was right out of the Passover script. But then he gives it to them and he says, each of you drink from it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people, and it is poured out as a sacrifice for the sins of many. Watch this. Uh, even if you go to Mark, Mark 14, he says that, that Jesus... He takes the cup, he gives thanks for it, and he gives it to them, and all of them drank from the cup. Uh, again, the idea is that everybody shared in, everybody participated in, everybody had a part of the cup of wine, that, that third cup of blessing. After the, after the supper portion of the meal was over, they all participated in, they all shared in drinking from the cup that Jesus offered. Now, rather than the normal Passover spoken explanation and declaration and blessing, Jesus said that the red colored wine represented his blood. Jesus stated that his blood was the signifier. It was the signature on a new covenant between God and God's people. Uh, in other words, this, this ethnic, um, religious, cultural celebration now he was lifting out of just one group of people and he was giving it a broader meaning and a more universal meaning. And he says, all of you, because you took a sip of it, because you drank from it, you are now brought into this new pact, this new agreement. Jesus conveys them. He transports them into a new covenant. <laughs> Why a new covenant? Well, the writer of Hebrews says it like this in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 7. He says, if the first covenant had been faultless, there would be no need for the second covenant to replace it. In verse 13, he says, when God speaks of a new covenant, it means he made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date. The, the, the first covenant, the, the, the one that was celebrated at that moment as just Passover, Jesus says, I'm making a new covenant. 
The, the first one was for those who would become Jewish and those who are Jewish, those who are the children of Israel. But now I'm opening up to, the, to those who are children by faith, who, who take the sip, who participate in it with me. There's a new pact. There's a new agreement. There's a new covenant. The, uh, one, one commentator says it like this, that it's, it's fresh, it's new because it's distinct from the other one. Uh, the other one is obsolete because it doesn't have this. You could tell they're two different covenants because the uh, one has different content. One has different blessings. One uh, one is the blood of animals. This one is the blood of Christ. The, the, the old one gave them temporal blessings. The, this new covenant gave them forgiveness and grace. So, so watch this. Uh, th there are some who want to try to tell us, particularly in the African-American community, that we are the 10 lost tribes of Israel and we have to go back. And we, if we would submit ourselves to the covenant, then we will walk in what it means to be God's chosen people as the Hebrew Israelites. Uh, the challenge with that is it's wrong historically, it's wrong ethnically, and it's wrong theologically. Why do I need to go back to an old covenant that's obsolete? been declared obsolete by Jesus himself, who says, I'm going to bring you into a brand new covenant. This one isn't, this one, it's, it's based in your ethnicity and your culture, but it's bigger than that. It, it's, it's a brand new identity. I'm conveying you not only into a new covenant, but I'm bringing you into a new identity. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making this about you and me walking together by faith. Uh, the, the, Paul says it like this in Ephesians 2 and 15. He says that Jesus made peace between the Jews and the Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. He, he took the two that were different and he made something big enough that those who come to him by faith can be conveyed into a brand new identity. But Paul's concept of a new man or a new humanity uh, is this idea that when we come to communion, we're recognizing we're brand new creatures. We're, we're part of brand, a brand new concept, a brand new pact that, that who we are in Christ is it, we, we take him in, we take him on and we take onto us and into us this new understanding, this new reality of a new covenant and a new, new way to see life, a new way to be in life, a new way to be in relationship with others like us and others who are not like us because what Jesus does in that moment is he by, by making sure everybody had a peace he made sure nobody was left out unless they wanted to be some kind of way Jesus found each of us lost in our sins and our shortcomings struggling trying to figure out who we are in a world that that was turned against us. And Jesus offers to us a piece of what he did for us. That it was his pain. Watch this. He offers us his pain. He offers us his suffering to make us brand new. To, to bring us out of those things that were crushing us. And to make us with the signature in his blood men and women, boys and girls, who belonged to a new kingdom, a new reality, with a Savior who was willing to give himself and share himself with us, that as we took him into us, he took us into him. And now we're brand new creatures. Old things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. So I'm going to ask that you would prepare yourself. Let's celebrate communion. Let's look at this that we share with Jesus. When, when we take the bread, when we take the sip of the juice, we're saying that we're accepting again everything that Jesus did, everything that Jesus is, and everything that Jesus offers. That we choose to step away from what we were and how we were. And we want to live in this new reality, in this new understanding. And so I'm going to ask that as you prepare your family or prepare your receptacles or whatever it is, I'm going to ask that you would pause, that you and I would take a moment. And let's take this moment first to confess our, those things that we tried to do that Jesus rescued us from. 
Let's confess our sin. Let's unburden ourselves. Let's release those things that we're still holding on to that are part of an old reality and an old covenant. And let's ask Jesus afresh to make us into who he has designed for us to be through his sacrifice, his suffering, and his signature. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you thanking you for all that you are. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you that you are the sinless one. You are the one who took on this same humanity that we have, and yet you are without sin. And you became the perfect sacrifice. You became the spotless lamb who takes away the sin of the world. And God, all we, brought, all we can bring to you is our, our righteousness as filthy rags. All we can bring to you is our brokenness. All we can bring to you is our sin. But we ask you that as we have put our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, thank you that you can wash us and make us brand new again. And so we come to you looking for the salvation and the redemption purchased by the suffering and the sacrifice of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're willing to do. Thank you for what you're making us into as we take you into us because you have taken us into you. And so now, God, I pray that you would bless these elements. It's just a little wafer and a little bit of juice, but it reminds us of how much it cost you to make us new. It reminds us of what you were willing to rescue us from and to bring us into because of your love for us. So God, I pray that you would sanctify these elements now and consecrate them as we celebrate and commemorate and share in the life of Jesus given to us and given for us. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, on that night that Jesus was betrayed, he asked his disciples to meet him in the upper room. And there the Bible says that he took bread, he broke it, and he kept breaking it till everybody had a piece. And he says, this represents my body, pierced, striped, beaten, whipped, nailed to a cross. But I'm doing this, I'm giving this to you. Let's do this in remembrance of him. Let's eat together. The Bible says in the same manner Jesus took the third cup after supper. He says, this represents my blood, which will be poured out for the sins of many. The problems and the things that separated us from God, Jesus has already paid for. And then to make sure that we would always operate in the blessings of what it means to be forgiven, he signed it with his own blood. Let's take and drink together. So the Bible says that they sang a hymn before they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. There was praise that erupted because they recognized where they were and who they were with. So as we do, and as Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians 11, if there is sickness or disease, we believe the power of Jesus is available through the price he paid, that the stripes laid on Jesus heals us. So if there's a sin issue, if there's a, a sickness issue, if there's a disease issue, as a point of contact, point your, aim your hand at your device, at your TV, at your camera, and I declare in the name of Jesus, by the stripes laid on him, by the price Jesus paid, by the wounds that Jesus willingly suffered and sacrificed himself for, I declare healing and wholeness and deliverance and, and, and freedom in Jesus' name, and somebody ought to be able to erupt with some praise because of what Jesus has done by giving himself for us. Somebody ought to bless him. Well, listen, it's offering time in the house. It's time to bless God with our gifts of tithe, offering, or love offering. As you can see, there's all these different ways that you can give. We want to make it easy for everybody to be able to participate and to give as unto the Lord and to worship God through giving. I uh, want to remind you again that we are still 
aiming toward our uh, Resurrection Sunday celebration, April the 17th at 1030 at the Westminster Christian School. Uh, I hope to see everybody there. Bring some other folks, invite people, and let's just spend some time celebrating Jesus for what he has done. Isn't it amazing? He died for our sins, but he didn't stay dead. And so we want to talk about what it means that he didn't stay dead at our resurrection service. We hope you join us. Uh, also, want to remind you that uh, you can still follow along with us. We're still continuing with our Bible study. Uh, we're, we're taking it up a notch as we talk about the miracles of Jesus. And so on Wednesdays, uh, feel free to join us on either of our channels. We want to make sure that you uh, continue to, to walk with the Lord but through the study of His Word at a deeper level. All right? Now listen, I was just talking to give you time to click your way through GiveLify or to sign your check or whatever it is that you need to do. Let's give as unto the Lord. All right? Father, we thank you for this opportunity to bless you in giving. We ask, oh God, that you would uh, uh, take these gifts as we give them sacrificially to you. I pray that you would bless them, stretch them, and use them to advance your kingdom here and around the world. I ask a special blessing on those who are sacrificing for our three in four to, to see this tabernacle place, this place of worship to come together. And I pray that you'll continue to give back unto those who share so generously with you and with your kingdom work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give. Well, listen, I want to personally thank you for your time and your attention. I pray that you will walk in the realities of what it means that you are in Jesus and Jesus is in you. You have a share. You have a part. You are full ownership, signed, sealed, and delivered by the blood of Jesus for all that it means to walk as a king's kid, as a prince or a princess of the kingdom of God. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray that as we in this moment of worship and study, I pray, oh God, that you'll continue to allow your choicest blessings to rest on your people. I pray for restoration. I pray for healing. I pray for the ability to walk in grace and in power. I pray for blessed, strong po kingdom potential relationships in the lives of your people. And I pray that you'll open up every door that needs to be opened and close every door that we have no business walking through. Help us to see, hear, understand, and perceive all that you're up to in us, around us, and for us, so that our lives may give you glory. For that, we give you praise in advance, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. There's nothing that you can do about it. Walk in victory this week because of what Jesus has already done, because of what he's already paid. You are in him, and he is in you. Have a great week in the Lord.